We thank our wonderful friends at ACO, India's tech first insurance company, as you well know. Uh, and today it's three stars from the table topping finals qualified uh, team everybody wrote off, not us, I think. The Gujarat Titans. Uh, we're so pleased to welcome, firstly, friend of the show, Shubman Gill. No doubt, remember us. Uh, remembers us. Good friends, uh, yeah. both of us. Uh, sort of helping each other with, in media. Um, David Miller and Lockie Ferguson. Boys, g'day. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, early in the morning in India. I like it, um, gentlemen. You, you know, you'd think your promotional duties would be done six weeks into the tournament, wouldn't you? But they're not. You know, how, how excited are you to be interviewed by um, some long-retired club cricketers? Extremely, yeah. I've been waiting around all morning. <laughs> I was here about 30 minutes prepping of what potential questions I might get. So I think I can speak for all three of us um, convincingly that we're good to go, yeah. But thanks for having us on your show as well. Obviously, we love the work you guys do uh, in and around cricket and, um, you know, the hype that you guys bring. It's been good stuff. Oh, that's, look at that. The Gujarat Titans, they're so humble, um, grateful. I don't think Lockie has a clue. He was reading that palm card. Oh, no, there's a palm <laughs> card behind him. <laughs> okay, let's talk about club cricket then. Uh, uh, Shubman, let me start with you. What, what's your relationship to club cricket or school cricket? You know, we, we talked to Prithvi last week. Uh, his top score in school cricket was 546. Do you have, uh, you know, similarly high scores where you were just too good? Uh, for, for young kids uh, and shouldn't have been playing? We have a bit of a uh, different uh, cricket system up north. We don't really have school cricket that much, but we do have inter-district uh, cricket, which is, I think, similar to school cricket uh, in the western uh, part of India. So uh, up there, yeah, we used to have a lot of uh, inter-district matches between between the districts and the cities. And uh, my highest score was in actually in the 16 districts. I scored around 420 runs. <laughs> around around season. 420. Was that in the season? This one, man. It was a two-day man. <laughs> David, I want to go to you. I've, I've got two prong question here. Like, what are we looking at for you? Were, were you sort of mercurial at rugby, hockey, tennis, squash? Was it always cricket? Was it always biceps? Was there any leg work in there? Uh, and also, <laughs> and also, when did you first start dominating? You know, adults. Because I mean, you played for South Africa when you were twenty, right? You were twenty when you debuted you for your talk, first game. Are you talking about lucky or myself? <laughs> um, school sports in South Africa is pretty big, so club cricket, uh, respectfully, is not too uh, too much of a thing. Um, and uh, but like, if you if you if you noticed at school, uh, you play in your provincial age groups growing up. Uh, and then from there, you can sort of, once you leave school, they, you, you filter into like an academy after school. And then, yeah, pretty much that's the, that's the kind of system. Um, club cricket, by all means, still exists and still takes place. Um, and like I say, respectfully, because I think my top, top, top club score is probably like 15. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Good comp. Uh, uh, yeah, but I mean, it was uh, it was a pretty cool journey, and uh, yeah, I did start at twenty with South Africa. Like I said, it was a pretty pretty early start. What so, happened to hockey? No, nah, it was more just to keep fit. You didn't you didn't have the calves for hockey? No, <laughs> no, I had I had the quads. <laughs> you don't have the calves for hockey. Oh, I'm sure it was firing shots over there. Firing He's shots early for days. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, and okay, Lock, Lockie, uh, you know you bowl absolute wheels, so you'll have some great stories from club cricket. And can I just start by saying, we were talking off air to a couple of guys who played with you at the Sharks in Sydney, uh, oh. and off record. Mm. And I got to say, they were a bit disappointed that they yep. didn't get the 155s, Lockie Ferguson. They got mm. uh, 135 Ks per hour, Lockie Ferguson. Yeah, well, of course, we know how good first grade cricket is in Sydney. Those guys are. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that probably seemed like 135 to those guys. They're such good batters. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I learned as well that um, you also had a French Olympic throwing coach, like a javelin coach, who used to help you bowl. Is that why you wear lo is that why you wear long sleeves now? <laughs> yeah, did you guys do you have the video? Sure, you had that, and that's um, <laughs> I haven't got the video. No, <laughs> I was on like the cricket show in New Zealand, and they Dooley, Dooley, and um, Mark Richardson were trying to make me bowl quicker, and they had all these great ideas. So I saw 
a sprint coach who's now Chris Barnes in the strength and conditioning. And I saw, I forget his name, but yeah, he was like an interesting catch and a cat. And he was just telling me to like, without anything in my hand, just throw my arm as quick as I could. And he was like listening to it. He's like, yeah, yeah. I feel like you can bowl fast. I feel it was, it was a weird experience. Um, but you know, obviously it, it all helps. Yeah. Yeah. He javelin. was trying to get me into javelin, but I'm, I'm glad I took the group up. I'll, um, I'll stick with you, Shumi, because I mean, you, you're so right, man. You've had a great tournament. In fact, all three of you have had great tournaments so far, as well as the team top of the table, of course. But for me, the highlight in, you know, in, in a game involving Gujarat so far was when Liam Livingston hit 117 metres six off, uh, off Mo Shami. Um, and then Mo Shami was just laughing about it as well. I mean, it helps when you're top of the table, you can do whatever you want. Um, Shuman, I want to know, where were you fielding when that, when that ball went in the air? And what was the first reaction? I was actually uh, at mid wicket and it flew over square leg and I was like, I've never seen a ball go so far in my life. It was yeah. just, it, it never came back. <laughs> I lost it. Like, I swear I lost it. <laughs> I swear I lost it. I was at the mid wicket and it was, I was actually at the closest to the ball. I was at mid wicket. It flew between me and square leg and I just lost it in the sky. <laughs> Oh, did, you even, did you even think about going and get it? Uh, and he was, I think Millie was at long one and I looked at him and I was like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I actually also lost it. I've, I mean, I must be honest. I've, I had a side view of it and I thought it was going out the stadium. Yeah. It just, <laughs> just, just, just stayed in. But yeah, definitely the biggest I've seen. I mean, I didn't even see the ball. I just saw the signal for six and glad it was only six. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, you, you've won um, in so many different ways in this tournament. High scoring, low scoring, come from behind, defending low totals. Um, it, it, so I guess the question is, is, is this the easiest tournament you've ever played in? No, no, it's far from that. Um, uh, it's a very tough tournament. Uh, but it seems like uh, things have been pretty rosy so far. Uh, but there's, there's a lot of stuff that goes behind the, the scenes that, uh, you know, guys put in a lot of hard work. Um, and as you say, a lot of close games, getting uh, getting getting behind each other, uh, as you mentioned. So yeah, it's been it's been a tough tournament so far, but uh, uh, yeah, we've 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 made it uh, we made it look a little bit easier than it really is. It must be very satisfying just to be top of the table and say, you know, it's ve- it's actually a very strong league this year. It's ve- it's very high standard. It's actually one mm. of the it's one of the best I've seen. <laughs> it's one of the best I've played. It's, but you know, we just happen to be winning. You know, just. <laughs> It's one of those things, eh? <laughs> <laughs> David, I'll, I'll stick with you. Everyone we've spoken to recently, um, you know, once we we, um, we told them that we were doing this with you and um, and everyone said, Dave Miller is a great guy. That's what everyone says. Everyone says everyone says it about you. So I want to know, first of all, do you think that being a great guy in the IPL should mean that you get a couple of zeros added to the you know, to, to the auction price? And also, have you spoken to, you know, maybe your uh, compatriot, you know, Faf Duplessis about some rig work, you know, legs, uh, biceps, taking the shirt off. We get a lot of comments about shirts being off. Instagram, 1 million followers. I've clocked that. Uh, have you spoken to Faf at all? Uh, I don't know where you're getting the source from, but uh, we'll take it. Uh, thank you for the uh, amazing compliment. I mean, uh, yeah, it's something that I wake up every morning to and trying to be the best best version of me. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, uh, look, I wish I got extra zeros at the end of my paycheck uh, um, for being such a good guy. No, um, I, don't, I don't know where this is coming, where, where this is going. To be honest, we're just journalists who just do a bit of background research, David. Yeah, I mean, we're journalists, yeah, we're journalists. And I, I guess I want to ask you, particularly now that you've confirmed that you just try and be the best person that you could be every day, when we look at great rigs around the tournament and around international cricket, we think about people like Marcus Stoinis, and then we think about some of your compatriots like Faf Duplessis and Aidan Markram. And do you feel like David Miller should have more respect put on his name when it comes to rig yep. and profile? Because I'm looking. Well, I'm oh, like everybody I'm else who's watching this, and I'm looking and I'm, I'm liking I'm what I see. And do, do you mm-hmm. think your name deserves to be mentioned in, um, I, I guess, in that air? Look, I wake up every morning and I look at myself in the mirror and I tell myself the same thing. So <laughs> I, uh, I try and uh, I try and I try and sort of uh, strive to be in that category. Um, but uh, I still got a few years on me, I think. Uh, but the one sitting next to me here is pretty lean and keen um, in the gym. He's there every day, twice a day. But, uh, yeah, look. He wakes up and he's like, oh, 
I should have more respect. I have one million followers. On <laughs> That's which coming from you, right? Eh? What are you, two yeah. million? Not yet. Not. I suppose it's just natural genes, eh? What do you? What would you say? Yeah, that's that's why I struggle. It's just genes. There's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> I tell you, uh, what, I'm I'm five minutes away from getting a good draft polo because they are looking sensational. Just just yeah. hugging hugging all the right places, yeah. hugging all the right places. Sorry, just we're just objectifying you now. Where you guys sit there yeah. and yeah, enjoy it. <laughs> just enjoy it. Yeah, Shubman, great uh, as we go to air. Great knock the other night against Luck. Now uh, we're lucky enough to see footage of the team celebrating with a cake, which soon after ended up being smothered on uh, your face. I understand this is a ritual and a sign of respect, um, but I guess I just want to know, like, how does it, just for people watching out there, because we watch all this footage of the cake being smothered on the face. Um, just, when it comes to me, because <laughs> when everyone else is doing it, they are so, like, civilized. Eat yeah. And get on with it. And I, I had just showered before that. Honestly, I had just showered. And it only seems to be a ritual when it comes to me. They just uh, love it and keep on me. He tries to look after his hair so well, so it's it's a good good time to just sort of mess that hair up, eh? So I mean, like, let's. I mean, Shubin, what what sort of care do you take for your skin and your mm. hair because they just look resplendent? I have yeah. to say, you look yeah. wonderful. <clears throat> for my hair, to be honest, not uh, that much, but for my skin, yeah, I do have like a night routine, like a five step night routine. Yeah, five step. <laughs> yeah, five steps. Right. It start, starts with face wash and then some toner, then some couple of serums and then to- topped up with like a night cream. That's I like it. it. It's a, I use a night cream as well. From it, But you, whatever you're using, it's working, brother. Respect. <laughs> Thanks, bro. He is 22. Uh-huh. I was going to say, yeah, it helps, <laughs> true, helps me yeah, 22. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's the secret? I'm 22. Yeah. <laughs> Just another one, boys. The other evening we saw... Uh, the great man Jasper at Boomer take five for 10 uh, as Mumbai went down to KKR respect for that performance and everyone involved. Um, and he said afterwards, disappointed with last night's result, but a memorable evening ne- nevertheless. And I just wanted to know, have you guys ever scored a hundred or taken a five for in a losing side? And um, how devastated were you that night that things just didn't work out um, for the team performance? How obligated do you feel in public to say that you're still disappointed with the loss when privately you must be absolutely elated with making a hundred or <laughs> taking five for an losing side. And it actually makes sense because who would want to fail? You may not be able to play the next game anyway. So, I mean, do, do you feel a lot of pressure just to convey disappointment when you're sitting in the dressing room with your head down, looking disappointed and thinking, I am the man. <laughs> Uh, look, I, I think you do get to that stage where you've got to say the right things. But no, I, I, I feel I feel like uh, it's it's how much you invested in the team uh, and what the guys are, are the connection to to the team that you have, uh, where you genuinely want the guys to you know to to pull through and get wins. Um, unlike my club team back at home, <laughs> but uh, you You're know, the loser. That, it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit of a no it's not it's not really about the result it's more about the, the after effects um the, the enjoyment afterwards but uh no i, I think uh, you're always wanting to as a, a professional sportsman you always walk onto the field wanting to win and you know i mean that's ultimately uh why we play this game to to compete at the highest level and yeah it's it's disappointing when it doesn't go your way but you would far rather lose a game doing really well um, and competing as a team than, you know, just bellying up as a team and, and, and losing. So it's more so the character that you show on the field, what, you, you know, what you, how you, how you lose really. Well, let's test that now because like, Lockie, I'll ask you, like, let's say hypothetically you take five for 12 overnight and then someone in the hotel the next day says, how did you go? And the team is lost by um, 130 runs. Um, but you've taken five to 12 and someone in the hotel says, Hey, how'd you go last night, Lockie? What, what do you say? Do you say your performance or do you say the team score first? Who am I talking to? Um, it oh, is a question. guy, um, it is, um, a, um, guy who's bringing you breakfast, um, in the morning. It's into you doing your room <laughs> service. He's come in and he says, how'd you go last night, Lockie? Team's lost by 130. You've taken, you've taken a bag for 12. So well, if, if it's our boys who work here, they, they follow every single ball. So they'd be pretty aware of that. Probably 
for me. Okay, you're uh, trying to you're trying to game the hypothetical. Yeah, don't game the hypothetical. Yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can see the trophies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> look, it's a good question. To be honest, I mean, it's happened a few times this trip. I mean, Umar Malik got a five row against us, and we still beat them as well. So, yeah. um, and he didn't seem too disappointed at the end, picking up. His <laughs> <laughs> I'm not speaking for him, of course. Um, don't want to put words in his mouth. Um, I think, yeah. <laughs> is that a good enough answer? <laughs> well, uh, yes. uh, you know, you, you, well, Umran's the new quick boy on the block, Lockie. I mm. mean, is there, are you watching his performances as well? Is, you know, is there room for two speedsters or is there any room for mm. one? And, you know, what does Lockie Ferguson have to say about that? Yeah, <laughs> well, that's, that's a great question. Um, Nah, look, I, I think it's it's awesome. Obviously, I love fast bowling and I love guys who charge in and, and try, try bowl as quick as they can. And he's obviously got a sixth gear and he uses it every ball. So um, it's pretty amazing to see a kid like that sort of clock up those speeds. So I'm, I'm in full support um, of it. Um, and then, yeah, just hope they don't have to face it too much um, more than anything. But nah, there's a, there's a good, I mean, it's, it's no secret. There's a good sort of fast bowler society where we tend to get around each other. So get on. Is anyone really weird about if you pick like Lock- Lockie, especially like as a bowler, if, does anyone get weird in the dressing room? If you pick up one of their bats, I, I play with guys where you couldn't touch their bats and go near their kit. I mean, I was trying to go through their wallets and stuff. So it's a bit different, but, but, <laughs> but, 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 but yeah, guys picking up each, each other's bats and be like, well, what are you, what are you doing? Touching my kit? That's mine. Like if you picked up one of Shubman's six or seven magic bats, he had in his life, apparently, like, would Shubin get weird about that? Uh, I would probably ask before I picked it up. Yeah. Okay. So most guys, I think, are pretty good nowadays, but I've come across in the past um, guys who get a little bit funny, particularly on game day and stuff. They just don't mm. like you mucking with their gear, which is which is fair. Um, but, you know, at training stuff, I, I haven't really had too many issues with that. Not that I'm going around picking up bats or digging through guys' wallets either. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I wish bowlers did that, like picked up shoes. They're like, oh, I guess we kind of do sometimes. They're like, oh, this is a good shoe. Is this, the luck- <laughs> is this a lucky shoe? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How's the black shoe? With- nah, the purple one was lucky. I'm not trying to take the purple and stuff. Uh, it's not black. I just color it in with a sharpie. I color it in, yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't imagine sharpie, but I always color my shoe in with That's one sharpie. Just, uh, just last one from me, guys. I want to know individually. I'll start with you, Shubman. Um, and then work their way across the line there. But when was the last time you heard from your club team? Um, so, Lockie, I know there's Parnell, CC for you. I'm not sure about um, David and Shubman, wh- where you guys play uh, your club cricket. But when was the last time someone from your club contacted you and what did they want? <laughs> it's actually been a long time uh, for me. The last when I played districts is what you mean, right? Like, we, mm, our club yep, is. Yep. Must have been in 2000 and. 19 or 18, I guess, because that was the last time I actually played district cricket. And what did they want? They asked me if I'm available for the district. <laughs> they just got 420 again. <laughs> <laughs> I struggled last week. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just getting my phone out because I'm just trying to see. It was Duncan Miller. Um, he's not my cousin or anything, but. Um, he plays, so I play for Crusaders uh, back mm-hmm. at uh, my, my club team and talking about uh, winning and losing and my, you know, my club team sucks and all that. We actually, we actually, we're actually the reigning champions and uh, we, win, we, we, win, we win club champs every day. So it's pretty easy. It's like clubbing seals, but, uh, but uh, yeah, so I play for Crusaders um, and Duncan Miller, captain for many years, and yeah, I'm, I'm good mates with him, and he keeps in touch with me regularly. So, it was actually him who messaged me to say, "Do I have a spare um, playing shirt for his son?" And did you say, "Stop texting this number"? <laughs> yeah, I sort of gave him. I gave him blue blue ticks for for two or three days, <laughs> and, and then said, "Sorry, I'm." So uh, I'll, I'll pass on your message to my manager. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, could you right? We are, we're top of the table. Yeah, we've got channels that you've got to speak. <laughs> you've got to speak to our team manager. Uh, yeah, look, I'm, I've got quite close ties to my club. I've got a lot of mates there. Um, the Parnell Peaches. Um, so a good bunch of lads. But um, now that they send me the weekly newsletter um, and then usually get a text from the coach asking if I'm available this weekend. So um, I, try, I try to play one game a year for them. 
Um, but uh, now nah, they've just got Asahi on tap in the club room, so I've been going down a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> there must be guys checking the Auckland Premier Cricket uh, like team sheet every week, making sure L Ferguson's not playing. Because if you play one game a year, that's a game that I'm I'm definitely missing. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, and I've rocked up. You guys have last man stands as well. Cricket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've rocked up for my brother's team a few times and just like kept just to help out. But <laughs> oh. I've got some, I've got some funny looks like rocking up there. The guys are like kind of looking at me from a distance. And then I just <laughs> pretend to warm up and stuff and then just like take the gloves. So that's all. But, but do you turn up in like full black caps kit, like wheel your bag in with like your name <laughs> yeah, on it? Yeah. Black caps bag. My brother's got a black caps bag too. And he's got all the kit. Fully sponsored. He's fully Kookaburra as well. So we look, we look the good. <laughs> Love that. Surely that's when you feel the most pressure when you play club cricket though, boys, or any kind yeah. of lower level cricket. Like we, we talked to Wakar yeah. Yunus a couple of months ago and he was roped into a last man stands game. Now, of course, Wakar is a little bit uh, more senior, you know, than uh, the guys in the room, but he's poor. He's poor. Yeah. Thanks. Sorry. My little boys here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> pretending he's listening, but he, uh, Wackar said he bowled a couple of overs and this bloke came out and sort of almost got on his knees to say, it's such a pleasure to play against you, then proceeded to hit him for six sixes. Uh, <laughs> and I just, I just, I just absolutely botched him onto the highway. <laughs> Thanks, Barney. So uh, do you guys have any experience? Do you feel pressure when you're playing even in the backyard or against your family that you still have to produce and let people know that you're number one? I think yeah. as a batsman, there's more pressure because you're like, fuck, it's only one more to get you out. Exactly. Here. If you, if you bowl 150 there, I don't think there's any pressure. No, yeah. no there's zero pressure. Uh, I had one time where I was playing a club game and they sent out a newsletter to say Lockie's playing. So, And then they stopped junior cricket for that morning to come watch the game. And I was like, Jesus, boys. And like my home track's quite a good batting wicket. So anyway, there's like 100 people, like kids. They played their game early, sorry, and finished so they could watch us all like crowded around with me at fine leg, like getting signatures as I'm starting to bowl. And then I proceeded to not get any wickets and I tried everything like <laughs> Yorker bumpers, round the wicket bumpers. And I tried everything. And then this little kid after like my fifth over, he's like, Lockie, how come you're not getting any wickets? Maybe we should change the bowler. <laughs> and I was just like, I, I felt like this small. And I was like, and it was, it was made worse because I was trying everything. So it looked like I was really putting in, but <laughs> just not a good day at the office. It happens. It does happen. Um, I like it how you're trying yeah. to sell over play in front of a hundred people. That's like, a really big deal for you guys. Like a hundred uh, people are like, oh, they're all down there. All the kids are down there. <laughs> that's a lot of New Zealand. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, hey, boys, thanks so much for your time. Lockie Ferguson, David Miller, Shubman Gill, wishing you guys the best for the rest of the tournament. You're flying high. Um, good draft. It's obviously a great franchise and you've been really generous with your time. Um, catch you guys next time. Or if we do get in touch with you, you'll probably just blue tick us and say, you got to go through the channels. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, no, thanks guys. Cheers, Thank guys. you very much for your time. Cheers. Eh? Thank you.